Hi, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, communicating effectively in an online course. So uh, a main difference in an online course versus a course in a traditional classroom is that the communication between teacher and student and student and other students uh, is a little bit more complicated. So when you're in a room, you might raise your hand or and comment about something that's going on in class. That dynamic simply is different on online because you're not in the same room as the people you're in class with. So there are a few ways to to effectively communicate online. Uh, the first way to communicate, of course, is by email, um, and this this mode of communication is probably the most important way. Um, is it's going to be across all courses, regardless of the resources that are available in the course you will always be able to email your instructor. There are some really great aspects to email. First of all, you have a written record of all your communication. That means that uh, while a phone call can be lost, it can be not answered, it can, um, it's, it's a fuzzy form of communication, right? The memory of the conversation may not be the same among all participants in the phone call. Um, people may think that expectations are different uh, based upon their memory of the conversation uh, email is not the same so email is a you know because it's written you can go back and read it um, so it's a more reliable form of communication now with that being said there is a lot to take into account email is permanent it's not a comment made in a classroom so everything that you you have to assume that anything written in an email is permanent that means it can be searched, it can be come back to later, it can be saved for years and years. Uh, so you have to take that into account when, when composing an email. When you send, hit the send button in an email program, it's as if you're publishing that document that you're sending uh, publicly uh, forever. Okay, There's no telling where that email may go. So as a result, uh, you need to develop and you need to use uh, some common sense when sending emails. Um, so when sending an email, number one is that you want to you want to speak in a formal manner. Uh, so when you're talking, when you're emailing your teacher or another student, you need to be polite. Uh, that means that you're not making any kind of joke, uh, for example, sarcasm, or any kind of off-color humor uh, is not going to go over well in an email. It's not the same thing as, as when you're in person and somebody can kind of read whether you're being serious or not. Uh, in an email, that's not the case. There's no there's no way for them to tell whether you're being serious or whether you're um, you, or whether you you mean what you say. So so in an email, you need to stay away from humor in general. Uh, it's not like texting with a friend. Uh, that's the most common uh, way that kids get in trouble with email that I've noticed is that you know they're so used to texting with friends that when they start to write an email they feel they take that same kind of informal communication style over to their email and that's just not okay uh, when you email your teacher or other students in uh, in regards to your coursework in regard to your classwork uh, you need to maintain some kind of formal manner. Okay, so uh, I would say stay away from sarcasm, stay away from any kind of, of bad language. Okay, you want to maintain a positive attitude on your emails. That means that um, you know you're trying to do your best work and you're trying to um, to find answers or solutions that will help you do your best work in your class. Um, you're not looking to complain about things or, or have a negative attitude in your emails. Um, okay, so stay away from bad language, stay away from informal language like texting, and we're all working together to do our best and to uh, do our best work in the class. So that's that's the kind of attitude you want to maintain in your emails. Now, so how do we how do we communicate? with our teacher. How do we know who to email? Well, that information is always going to be in your course guide or course syllabus every single time. So if you're in a class and you don't know how to get a hold of your teacher, 
open up your course guide or course syllabus, it should be the very first things. One of the very first things listed in your course syllabus should be the contact information for your teacher. And that's the first person you go to um, if you need to contact your teacher. Now your teacher should be communicating with you via a forum or something else, and that's what we're going to go into next. So email is the very first, most reliable, always, always useful way to communicate in a class. Um, now let's talk about a couple of other ways to communicate inside a Moodle. Uh, the first are forums. Okay, so, uh, and I just switched over to our sample course here. Um, now this isn't going to be in every course, but for example, let's go ahead and take a look at this class announcement forum. So let's say that um, in this forum, uh, the teacher may have added a new topic. Uh, but let's say that I want to add a new topic. Let's say, actually, let's let's go out of the announcements forum because this is mainly for a teacher. Let's go into the questions for the teacher forum. So in a class, your teacher your teacher may add this type of a forum, uh, and basically what we would do is we would click add a new question, and this would be a question for the teacher. So let's say um, it's about homework question on homework one and question one is the, the um, first sentence a typo or is it correct let's say we had that question okay so notice that I've been directly to the point I haven't made any comments otherwise I've been polite and and succinct Succinct means to use as few words as possible to get your meaning across. Okay, so there it is. So I've asked my question. So now let's say that somebody wants to comment on this question. So let's say my teacher would go in. They'd see, oh, my, there's my discussion, a question on homework one. Frank has a question. Let's go in. The teacher would go in and click. Uh, they'd go in to click reply. And now what they would do is they'd actually go in and click, uh, and they'd go in, they'd look at the question, and then they would click reply. Uh, and let's say they would go in and say, uh, the text is correct. Okay, notice that in a forum, I'm not writing a letter, right? This is not a formal one-page business letter that you might write in an English class. Okay, this is utilitarian uh, text, right? It's it's just as much text as to be useful for the for the app for for what I'm doing, right? I didn't need to write a book on this. All I did was I'm just trying to communicate as briefly as possible. Okay, so interestingly enough, an email might contain pleasantries. For example, you might start with "Hello, Mr. Smith," and you might end with "Thank you, um, your student." Sally, right? Uh, so in a forum, it's going to be more brief. In a forum, the correct way to uh, to ask questions would be to simply put uh, type the text with no hellos or thank yous or any kind of pleasantries. Okay, um, and remember that in a forum, everybody can read this the, your replies. So in an email, you have some expectation of privacy. Uh, for example, when you write an email to your teacher, you would expect that that teacher wouldn't share that information with the rest of the class or the people that are in your class. Uh, and it would only share that information with other adults who are involved in the issue. Um, in a forum, that's not the case. Obviously, when you post to a forum, this is read by every single person in the class. So there is no expectation of privacy there. <coughs> okay, so we have emails, we have forums. Uh, and our last way that we're going to take a look at is messaging. So um, this is my students' favorite way to communicate inside Moodle. Uh, your teacher may, I'm just clicking back here to get back to the main course. Your teacher may turn this on, they may not. Okay, so you may see this uh, in, your, in your course and you may not. So if you notice on the right here, we see uh, this messaging block. If we click on messages, Notice that I can search for people. I've already searched for myself. Let's say your last name of your teacher is Carmody. You would type in their name. You'd find them. 
Okay, then you might click message history. Uh, oops. Okay, so basically you can add them as a contact. You just click their name and now you're writing a message to them. So obviously I'm writing to myself, but in this case, this is the contact over here. Uh, so basically you just write them a message. Text messaging in this case will only be read by the other person. Uh, this is another time when when you're writing an email, an email is somewhere between a text and a letter. So an email, you need to be a little bit formal. You probably want to have a greeting and a, uh, a um, a closure, some kind of closure on the email like hello and then at the end you'd say thank you or goodbye. A text is not the case. You just want to be as succinct as possible. So on question 10, what is the uh, last word? So let's say you couldn't read, uh, read some word on some question you're working on. I'd go ahead and send them a message. And this way, when your teacher came back on, this is a way that they could then get a quick message or another student in your class could get a quick message. Uh, you might find that in some of your courses, they'll use different types of external websites to do this type of messaging. Um, hopefully, they use Moodle more than, more than not, but um, there could be cases where you use external websites. But these are the three ways inside of Moodle that you could be communicating in class. Uh, please remember the etiquette. Um, uh, it will really save you a lot of problems and really makes you look more professional in the end. Uh, good luck.